All right. Hi there, I'm Shauna Robbins, founder and CEO of Third Spark Health. Today, I am doing an Authority Magazine interview with Kelly Price. We're going to be talking about thriving through menopause, wellness tips, wellness tips for women over 45. Kelly is the CEO and founder of Reset Medical and Wellness Center in Strongville, Ohio. With over 30 years of experience in automotive retail, claims administration, business development, and captive insurance management, Kelly brings strategic leadership to the forefront. Kelly's dedication to visionary thinking and collaborative growth drives her mission to improve lives through innovative wellness solutions. Hi, Kelly. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Shana. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Of course. I appreciate you and everything that you're doing to help women thrive through menopause. Um, it's, a, it's a difficult time. It can be a very difficult time in life. <laughs> Yeah. So tell me, how did you, you know, how did this become a passion of yours, a passion project and, you know, now your work? Yeah, well, it, it was interesting because after being in the automotive industry for over 30 years and running a business in a male dominated business, <laughs> mm. um, that it was very interesting because I would often suffer um, in menopause with you know, being in events and having major hot flashes. And I, I remember literally sitting at my company holiday party, you know, 300 or 400 people out there giving the awards banquet, talking and in the middle of it, I was like, I'm so sorry, I'm having a hot flash. Like I couldn't even speak. I was like, just so overwhelmed with a hot flash and everybody laughed and I made light of it. But truly, I mean, you live you know, you're, you kind of live around that paranoia of what's going to happen. And are you going to break out in a sweat while you're sitting in a meeting or on an interview or, you know, what's going on? And it gets overwhelming to not be able to even have a conversation through it. And then, you know, the night sweats and everything else. But I had learned, um, I got involved in documentaries to where a uh, raise social action awareness around certain topics. I was involved in a documentary um, related to increasing or decreasing the unemployment of the blind um, to show that the blind are actually employable. And I was also involved in a documentary on sex trafficking, which you may have seen. And, um, and then as I was talking with one of the producers on it, he was telling me about a documentary about a doctor they were following related to PTSD, um, anxiety, depression, and menopause. And as I heard about it originally, I was like, my son absolutely needs this um, because he's a fireman. And then as I was learning more, I was like, not only does he need it for his PTSD and anxiety, I need it for my menopause at the time. Um, they had me track my menopause, hot flashes and night sweats. I was having like 35 to 40 a day. Um, more than half of those were super intense. So if you've been through them, I think you and I talked a little bit about it. You have been. I, I have. And that's an enormously large number. And I feel for you because um, I was probably getting 10 or 12 and that was debilitating in itself. So I can't imagine having, um, you know, three times that in a day. Yeah. yeah, it was, it was a little intense. So, I mean, when I was starting to track them, I guess I didn't even know how many that I had been having. Like you just kind of, it just becomes part of who you are. And I mean, we would be playing card games at nights with, I have two older sons and we'd be playing card games and I'd be like, hold on, you know, got to fan myself off. I hope, you know, if we play nerds, and you've got a hot flash, you're in trouble because you can't play nerds and, you know, sit, get behind. But anyhow, um, so we would be playing games and I was just like overwhelmed with it. And so when I heard about it, I was like, my son went for the treatment first. And then as soon as I saw the results that he got, I scheduled myself immediately for the treatment and it has changed my life. But even prior to me having the treatment, seeing the results that the neurosympathetic reset had on my son, my son-in-law, my girlfriend, my friend that's the director and his wife, I mean, all of them, just such huge results related to shame, grief, insomnia, you know, hypervigilance, um, irritability. I mean, none, none of us have irritability that have menopause, but 
Um, I just knew that I had to bring this to more people in a way that is affordable as possible. And being as I had sold my company financially, I was able to go ahead and start the business and really not worry about necessarily it being overly profitable as much as reasonably priced so that as more people can get the treatment. So it's not really for me about money. It's about helping people because mental health is just, it's going crazy right now. Over 20% of America has been diagnosed with PTSD, let alone the number of people that are running around undiagnosed. And, you know, a lot of people thought PTSD was only for like the military or things, but social anxieties, <laughs> COVID threw us a, a lot of us into, you know, PTSD or hypervigilance or depression, um, weight gain, lots of different things like that. So as soon as I found out about it, I set out on a mission. I literally got my treatment January 8th. I wrote a business plan. I started to open up the center. I found a place to rent or to be able to open it up at. And I needed to have a doctor because you actually have to be a doctor to open a medical center. <laughs> and so I had to find somebody that would want to partner with me. And luckily I found an amazing gentleman as our chief medical officer, Dr. Joshua Goldner, that was willing to see my dream and not knowing me, join partnership with me and open up a medical center within 90 days of starting it. So it was pretty, pretty amazing. Wow. Oh, that sounds amazing. Well, I'm really glad that you're here. I'm glad you're doing this work. And I really want to learn about this treatment. So can you tell me all about it? The, I know you touched on the name of it, but if you could say it again and kind of give me an overview of, you know, what your clients or what your patients um, can expect when they come in to see you. Yeah. So it's a very simple procedure. It's a stellate ganglion block that has been used for over 100 years um, for pain. And like a lot of different treatments that you find out, you know, or medicines, they they start for one reason, but end up affecting maybe other modalities that they didn't even know. There's a lot of medicines out there that, you know, I'm on a high blood pressure medicine. I don't have high blood pressure anymore and haven't for quite a few years. But they said that the benefits of that high blood pressure medicine they're finding has so many more benefits for women with heart disease. So they've kept me on it. And so it's very similar to that is a stellate ganglion block was being used for pain treatment. And as they were doing it in military, they found that that stellate ganglion block actually allowed the PTSD symptoms in these military or first responders to diminish and they started studying it and they realized that this same block, but given in two different areas actually has a really, really big impact on anxiety, depression, and so forth. The first thing that was actually studied though was menopause. So in 2006, that's when they figured out that this, um, this block actually re-regulates or resets your, your temperature gauge in your body. And so it's the sympathetic nerve and you, you're given a sympathetic nerve for a particular reason to know fight, flight, you know, fight off things, te regulate your temperature, you know, do all the different things that it needs to be done. But sometimes, not sometimes, always underneath a lot of stress, if your sympathetic nerve becomes injured because it's had too much stress on it, then it becomes like on fire all the time. And so the nerve endings in your brain are constantly at high alert. So you're sitting at an alert, alerted state, and that causes the depression, anxiety, temperature regulation issues, different things like that. So by resetting the sympathetic nerve with the stellate ganglion block, it allows your, your um, sympathetic nervous system to be reset and allows you to process normally again. So I liken it to like a computer. If my computer wasn't running really well, the first thing the IT team would tell me is reset the computer, restart it, and let's see how it works. It's basically the same thing. It's temporarily resetting your sympathetic nervous system, allowing those nerve endings to heal, and then allowing once, because it's not, it's a, not going to last forever, the actual block the pain medication will wear off, but in the meantime, your nerve endings have healed. And so that's what it's really allowing it to do. So 
we do a sympathetic block on one side, a cellulite ganglion block, excuse me, on one side, the right side first, and then usually the second day or very short thereafter, do the left side, and it allows for a release of emotion and you know, processing and things on both sides of your sympathetic nervous system and has been just shown to have like an 80 to 85% efficacy rate, which is like 50% higher than the best medicine or EMDR or anything that you can get. Wow. That's really, really impressive. I know when I um, was having my hot flashes, like I said, it wasn't nearly the amount that you were having, but I went to my general practitioner and um, all they had to offer me were antidepressants to, and, and that wasn't something that I wanted to choose for my body, but I couldn't believe that there wasn't any other option for me. I wasn't even offered hormone replacement. I wasn't offered anything else other than antidepressants. And, you know, the statistics of the amount of women who reach menopause, and that's the first order of business that they get from their doctor, antidepressants, it's a, it's a very large number of women now, you know, ages 50 plus that are on antidepressants for hot flashes. So I think to have another option for them is really, really important. So I'm really glad that we're, we're having this conversation today. So it's funny, it's funny that you say that really quick, Shauna, because I go to the Cleveland Clinic Executive Health and people fly from all over the world to see these doctors. It's a full day visit. And as I was meeting with my doctor and telling her, because obviously I'm in Cleveland, she's at the Cleveland Clinic, telling her about what we were doing. And she said, I just have to tell you what you are doing is so important. She said, because we as physicians do not know how to handle these depression, PTSD, you know, all of these symptoms that basically you're, you're processing, they just don't know how to handle them. She said, we don't have the answers. We don't have the treatments, you know, really approved to be able to, you know, do this um, within the hospital system. And she said, what you're doing is so needed. And I thought that was really cool to hear that from, I mean, one of the top doctors at the Cleveland Clinic. Yeah, our medical care in the United States is um, definitely more of a crisis care, not a preventative <laughs> care. And so um, actually being able to do something like this that can actually prevent things going forward, um, short of them handing us a pill, that's about the only avenue that they have. So I think more and more um, doctors and nurse practitioners in the medical field are actually looking for people outside of you know what they have access to as a supportive. I always tell my clients that, that I'm one of the team members, right? It's like, you don't, you know, we, we're all working together for the greater whole of helping, helping to see the client heal, helping to see the patient's life improve and their quality of life improve. And so there's a place for all of us to work collaboratively and cooperatively. So I think that that's great that you got that recognition from her. Cause I think that that's, yeah. that's really important um, just to be seen by someone in the medical community. So Give me an idea of, I know in your article for Authority Magazine, you talked about the five things that women can do to thrive during menopause. Obviously, this is one of them because hot flashes and night sweats are so debilitating. And the first thing that left for me besides my peace of mind was my sleep. Um, my sleep was just went out the window with the constant hot flashes and, and night sweats all night. So the idea that I could could do something that wasn't you know based in either taking an antidepressant or I mean, there wasn't, you know, what, sleeping on a, like a, a chili pad or wrapping myself in ice packs. I mean, it was like, those were the things that were given to me as potential solutions. So, you know, so we've discussed that, but what about the other, you know, parts of menopause that women go through? Um, do you want to give us your, your tips as a practitioner of things that you, that you would advise them to thrive, to use? Yeah. Well, first of all, thrive? just to clear, I'm not a practitioner or a doctor, so I'll just tell you from my personal experience, Perfect. I just want to make sure. Um, and I did, you know, this is the one thing that I would say is that proper sleep is super important, but it's really hard to get proper sleep to your point when you're having night sweats all night long. And I was super blessed. Like the first couple of years, I don't want to say blessed, blessed with hot flashes, but no night sweats. And only probably the last six months that I start getting into really heavy night sweats, which, you know, I would think. I don't know what people are talking about. Like, I don't get it. But when you know, when you 
them, <laughs> you know what's going on now. And it is really, really disruptive to your sleep on and off with the sheets and, you know, back and forth and in and out of bed. And just, I mean, it's not comfortable laying in a bed that's soaking wet. And so that, that improper sleep really, really hurts you. So I will say that the neurosympathetic reset does help you with sleep. Well, number one, if you regulate your body temperature and you're not having night sweats, that's number one. But number two, it does a lot of our patients have really, really improved insomnia um, or, you know, or lack of insomnia, I guess I should say. And that's one of the side effects um, that's really like powerful that we have found. We actually have everybody profile for insomnia before they have the treatment and we see the results because it's a standardized assessment that's, you know, it's a generally acceptable assessment and we watch them through it. If you go onto our website, you can kind of see a ticker of all the different um, improvements and it's coming directly from the patient into our website. So we don't have any control over what goes there, but the highs and lows or whatever it is, but it's really amazing to see the difference in the insomnia. But insomnia or proper sleep is one. Most importantly is exercise. Getting up and exercising first thing in the morning um, really mentally sets you on the right path. And I would say for me with menopause and everything else, if we don't take care of ourselves first and take care of what I would say, I always said to my employees, take care of your asset first, which is you. Because if you can take care of your asset first, then you can take care of other people. No different than an airplane. They say, put your mask on first, then put your child's mask on. That's exactly opposite what we would do if we weren't told that's what we were supposed to be doing, right? It's the same thing. We have to have personal care. So for my me personally, my routine is to get up in the morning, exercise, I write a letter to God, I do my devotionals, and then I listen to a positive podcast while I'm getting ready. Um, so just trying to fill my mind and my spirit before I even get the day going. Because if I can have gratitude and I can practice that first thing in the morning and I can get the exercise in and get my endorphins up, our mood is the worst thing with menopause, right? So what can we do? medicine is not going to help that, you know, all talk therapy is not going to help. You have to get up and do it. You have to feel really good about yourself. And then once you do that, then all the other things that come in, make it much more easy to go throughout your day because you've already felt accomplished and you've already taken care of yourself first. Yeah. And what about diet and nutrition? What do you recommend? So obviously fruits and vegetables are super important. There's um, quite a few things in the article that you know, are recommended, um, the higher fiber fruits are, excuse me, vegetables, broccoli, beans, you know, things like that, that will help you, uh, high protein would be great, but in really staying away from sugar and caffeine, although I'm not a really good caffeine follower on that, but I do drink a lot of water. And so you need to have a lot of fluids going into your body. Um, it's really super important to keep hydrated through all of this. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent with that. Um, and what about weight gain? You have any advice for women dealing with weight gain during menopause? So proper nutrition, number one is the biggest thing. And, but if you, again, it's all mental. I really think like if you could get up and get going first thing in the morning and I just say walk 5,000 steps before breakfast and you don't have to be vigorous. You don't have to be, you know, at a big workout camp and, you know, going, although strength training is super important at our age um, to keep up that strength, especially in the core, in the legs, um, to be able to sit and stand as we get older. But I would say if you could get up and get going that by doing that, you're going to have a a much better mental attitude of what you're going to eat the rest of the day. Cause you're going to feel good about yourself. You're going to have already won. Um, my business coach, Chad Willardson says, what's your wake up and win strategy. What are the first three things you're going to do the second you get out of bed? And so for me is no snoozing because snoozing only hurts you, um, going to work out and then doing my Bible and prayer. Those are the first three things that I do every single day. And if I can do that, then I know I've already won for the day, right? Everything else 
is just the bonus because I've already won. Yeah. Just the cherry on top. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. My, my morning routine is similar to yours. Same thing. Um, I start with the prayer actually before I work out, but I like that sometimes I do it while I'm working out. Um, yeah, me too. I, yeah. I, think it's, uh, I think it's just a, a great thing to add in, at least for me, even for some um, who maybe aren't praying, even I encourage them to do a gratitude list of three to five yeah. things that they just wake up and feel so grateful for. So I think that just having, like you said, having that structure in the morning is really, really important. Yeah, I was going to say I have, and I give these away for free. I'm trying to find it. Um, I do a five minute gratitude journal every uh -huh. morning. So I don't know if you've ever seen, oh, let's see here. Hi. There it a is. Five minute journal. I have seen yeah. that. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. So doing it's, you know, three things you're grateful for, three things that would make today great and a daily affirmation to start the day. And then to finish the day, you do three highlights of the day. And what did you learn today? And it is, I've been doing it for a couple of years and I do it with a couple of friends as well. And I give them away for free. If you go to my blog, you can log on and I'll send you any book that I write about. Um, I'll send out to people. My mission is to give away 50,000 books. So, um, but if you, if you go in there and you do that gratitude every single morning and you give yourself a positive affirmation, again, you're winning for the day, right? And then going to bed with gratitude instead of with stress is another way to end the day that you can sleep a lot better. Yeah. Doing the highlights before bed uh, was really life altering for me as a woman. Uh, most women that I know and that I work with, we have a hard time giving ourselves credit where credit is due. Mm -hmm. And so that book and others that I've done, but it really helped me to realize because I'm always looking for ways that I can be more on top of things, more perfect, more this, more that, right? I'm always pushing myself so hard. And so to actually take a moment to go, okay, wait a second, wait a second. I did have things that I want to celebrate today. And um, just to give me a little bit of space to focus on that, I thought was, that was really helpful during my perimenopause journey and, you know, kind of through my late forties and then into my early fifties when I didn't feel like I was doing anything right. You know, I just felt like everything was falling to pieces, but when I really sat down and looked at it, there, there were some really great highlights every single day. So yeah, I think, yeah, that's and I, you know, if you, if you're not an exercise person, like if you're sitting there going, well, I don't exercise now, just do something. Like I remember when I first started walking, I spent 30 years at a desk running a business and very, very unhealthy. And about six years ago, I decided I am, I can't, I'm going to, I'm literally going to end up in a chair at 60 years old, not being able to get up if I don't do something. But I, I started walking and I remember I'd walk at like two and a half miles an hour and think, wow, I'm walking at two and a half miles an hour. You know, now I walk at 4.2 miles an hour and sometimes I'll just run at six or six and a half or seven miles an hour. And I've never run anywhere in my whole life. And so I think I would just say to you, it's never too late. You can do it. And the, especially if you're going through menopause, do something for yourself that makes you feel better. And you can't, I mean, I actually, I've lost a hundred pounds in the last um, four years. And so but it's all been just by eating properly and walking and exercising and strength training. I did not do a diet. I mean, I follow like a healthy eating food plan, but I don't necessarily, you know, it's not a crash diet. It took me a couple of years to lose the weight and, and I'm okay with that. Like I just knew that I was on the right path. And so for me, I kind of got lucky because I started on my health journey of eating properly you know, and I say, if it's real food, <laughs> fruits, vegetables, meats, eggs, cheeses, dairy, like truly a Mediterranean type diet. If you eat that food in non-processed food and you exercise, you're going to lose weight. And, you know, so you just have to make a decision to want to eat healthier. Yeah. And then I think that that helps everything. It helps your body process your hormones. It helps you with stress. It helps you with sleep. It just creates this positive feedback loop in your life that just starts to make everything easier. And then you have more energy, which makes it easier to get up and exercise, which makes it easier to go to the store and cook at home more and not eat out. And so it just is, you know, um, taking yourself from a negative feedback loop that you might be in and moving yourself to a positive one. So, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, you so much for working out. You're not going to want to stop, right? I mean, yeah you know, once you get in that habit. So, yeah.
Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for today. I really appreciate right. our chat and I appreciate you um, and all that you're doing to help women thrive through menopause. How can people find you if they, if they want to follow you or connect with you? Yeah. So um, you can go to the reset center.com um, and go on and take a free mental health assessment. If that's what you'd like to do. Also a menopause assessment. If you're interested, um, you can look me up. KellyJoePrice.com is my website that'll link you to pretty much every part of my life, depending on what area you're interested in. But I would love to give out a couple of books if anybody wants one. And I'd love to treat you for menopause. Most importantly, it's uh, life changing. So it's the cool thing is you can fly in. We have people fly from all over. I just got off a phone call with or a webinar with somebody that flew in from South Africa um, to have the treatment done. And you just fly in, you get the treatment in the afternoon, get the next treatment the next morning, and then you can leave and go back home. Um, so it's pretty simple and easy. Wow. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right, Kelly. Thank you so much. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. I appreciate you. Have a great day. You too.